It's the end of the season as we know it, and we are comfortably going to finish mid-table. There is literally no way we're not going to finish mid-table, but that's okay. It's a good first season. Now we need to sort of reevaluate our targets as we go forward. Let's talk. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another Football Manager video in the saddle for you. And well, like I say, we are comfortably going to finish mid-table. There is no no getting around that. We have a look at the league table. Two games to go. We are not reaching them and we are not going down. So if we can finish 10th, I'll be happy. Um, I mean, we could possibly climb as high as 9th. That'll be fantastic. Either way, it's been a really good season, really. Especially when you look at the fact we were meant to finish 18th. So yes, we were expected to stay up, but we could finish nearly sort of eight places above that. And the job's not quite done. Two games left to go. We have played the game in between last episode, a 1-1 draw against Sunderland. 90th minute equaliser. Yeah, it was a bull 90th minute equaliser as well. I'll have to bleep that. That is frustrating. But it was just one of those where I think it was Kremiadas at the back, actually. And he could have just played a simple pass forward. We've got it set to short play and he launched it, launched it in the 90th minute. And it, of course, led to a goal from 40 yards or whatever it was. Anyway, stupid, but it cost us the three points. Today, though, Reading and Palace to finish the season. Reading in 15th, Palace in 5th, interestingly. So are we going to affect this playoff run? We could affect the playoffs. So... Let's, let's have fun with this. But really what we're going to do, we're going to chat about what we're going to be doing next season. That's what a lot of it will be. Today, um, Reading, like we say, and this is the team. Um, Kelleher in goal, back three of Cardoso, Kremiadas and Williams. Let's speak about f a couple of things, actually, because I've already started to make some moves for next season. So we can confirm a few things. First of all, Valentinos Kremiadas will be here next season but not on loan. We can confirm we've agreed a deal, £350,000, um, and he it's confirmed he will be here next year. I think he's a hell of a signing. I think he's been very good for us this year. Not quite at the 7 rating, but for us, he's been very good, and I think he has the potential to grow even more. This is what I'm talking about last episode. We have to sign players at a shorter fee to improve their value and make some money. That's the idea. And Valentinos Kremiadas is part of that. If we can have another good season and set him off for a million pounds, good. His partner, Goncalo Cardozo, will be here for another year. We've confirmed it. He will be here for another year. Um, we only have to pay sort of, I think it's 10% or something like that. So, yeah, 10% look of his, of his wages. Easy money and a quality player as you... I'm sure you realise. We've had him two years now. Big part in why we went up last year. Again, a good year from him. A 6.96 for a mid-table side. That's pretty good. Hopefully he can do even better next year. But with those two in the bag, that's very good for us. And managing to do that got me thinking, who else can we try and bring back for another year? I know I don't want to concentrate on loan players, but if we can get the important loan players here for another year and build a side around them, improving the other positions in permanent positions, it will be good for us. So Kiana Hueva comes back. He has been superb this year. 6.99, four assists, six goals. Very, very good from the right wing back position. And he's back for another year. His contract runs out at Liverpool at the same time. If he has a good year, could he come on a permanent? I'd like that. That would be very good. And finally, Bryn Mulvaney will be back for another year. He's What is going on with these, these arrows, by the way? Training-wise, for some reason, something's not working. I'll look into that. He's not improving, which is weird. Um, but he is back for another year. Again, he's had a decent year this year. Obviously, nowhere near what he did in League One. But 15 and 39 in the Championship, pretty good. He's been in pretty good form along the way. Um, a goal today would be great as well. So let's let's have him back for another year, try and build an, a, a squad around him scoring goals in one way and then try and replace him eventually. That's the idea. What I do want to do next year is probably go back to the 4-2-3-1 or at least have it as an option. This year we got rid of wingers and I'm not saying it hasn't worked for us because it has. But I'm going to sign hopefully a couple of quality wingers and uh, make it a little bit more attacking so we can have a go at getting into those playoffs. That's the, the aim for next year, I think. Let's have a go at getting into those playoffs. We have this as a backup in case we need it, but I feel like 
if we go a little bit more attacking, we do have the players to do some damage. Today, though, as I say, let's go through this team. We've gone through the defence. Kiana Hueva and Reese Devine will play. Zambarek and Longstaff. And we've got to give Joel Casey the go behind the striker. Why not? Dylan Lever isn't quite fit. He might come on in the second half to get some uh, match fitness underneath him. Jacob Bell and Mulvaney up front. And let's see how this goes then. It doesn't really matter too much. But a good end to the season gives a bit of momentum and a, and a, a bit more of an attractive nature to any potential transfers is the idea. Oh, look at these. They're playing well. They're scoring goals. I don't know, maybe. Ajaria is still at Reading. What is that? That is madness. I mean, he went on loan to Stoke, weirdly, for a year. I mean, he's been a good player for them, actually. <laughs> and, of course, I'm playing Joel Casey against the side that we signed him from, from Reading on a free. So, maybe you want to prove a point today. This year, he's kind of had a bit of a harsh run at it. Next year, I am thinking he could be that left wing back role. I've got to be honest, not left wing back, left wing role. I think he's good enough. The stats may not, the stars may not even agree, but I think he's good enough. First highlight, and it could be as if we can win the ball, and we do. Longstaff back to Cardoso. Good to have him back for another year. And here is Joel Casey. I mean, that wasn't... I was hoping he'd switch that and be a bit more involved. It didn't seem to happen. Hueva, Longstaff, Zambarek. Can we... I mean, I might switch into an attacking role because he's getting bunched up with these. That's a good ball wide for Devine. Can he find a cross? Reese Devine does, and Jacob Bell should score. We will do that, though. Let's stick him on an attack version. He, he may not like it, but... He is good enough, and we are dominating possession early on. Again, similar to last episode, this is the type of game. Next year, we're looking at it and going, we've got to be winning. Because if we're going to get into the playoffs, 15th place Reading is a game you need to win. And let's see if we can do it today uh, early on, before these new players come in, is the idea. Highlight here, and Casey's involved, which is good. Zambarek, he's got to go wide, I think. Reese Devine, always an option on that left wing back role. He's crossing, and eventually it's fell to Jacob Bell. His 10th of the season, a man that I don't think we're going to get back next year. I'd love to, but I don't want another loan. I've got to be honest, that's three in the team, and three valuable loan players. If we could sign him on a permanent, I would. I just think it's very unlikely. He's going to go on to be a very good player in this save. And to have him for a year, it's been good for us. And with that, we lead. Good start. A home game as well. Next year, again, home games are going to be super important. They have been important this year to a point. But I feel like we've actually been good on the road with this formation. Next year, if we're attacking games, I want us to be... Uh, uh, the. I want us to attack games like we did in the League One, to be honest. I'm not saying we're going to win the League or nothing, because that's not going to happen. But if we can reach the playoffs, that'll be good. We've worked it wide here. Kiana Hueva inside for Matty Longstaff. Longstaff to Zambarek. Joel Casey on the edge of the box. This is good football. Joel Casey! Yes! That is what you like to see. A goal against his former team. And Joel Casey has his first of the season. Like I say, not really been given a fair shake of it. But we're giving him an option today in a, in a role that he's not familiar with. He's not particularly happy in that role, but he's proving to me that he does have quality. Good finish. That move into an attacking playmaker role seems to have suited him. He's the best player on the pitch right now, so hopefully he can continue that. Another highlight here, but it could be Reading cupboard forward in there. Weird sort of grey kit. Ajaria wide for Seaman. Seaman. Kremia Das heads away and Ajaria puts it wide. Seaman slung one in there, didn't he? But yeah, let me know what you think. Do you think we have what it takes to be in the playoffs? Obviously, some of these players are going to disappear. Actually, in the starting lineup, there's only going to be Jacob Bell disappearing, which is interesting. Um, I want to make sure we do have this sort of defensive formation available. I say defensive formation. We've been a better team by a long way here. Um, and maybe this is a formation that could still work, but I feel like we need wide options just in case we want to play a little bit more attacking. If I could bring off a couple, bring on a couple of wingers here, it would be great. Do you know what I mean? You, you, you have options. That's a testing ball by Longstaff. And they have Pereira. And who's, who's Pereira? Is that... Is that Ricardo Pereira? He looks like he's playing right back. Anyway, Bercy's come forward. Reese Williams deals with it. Reese Williams, I've been very happy with. Defensive, defensive options next year. I've got to be honest, apart from maybe one centre back, I'm not really too worried. It won't be Lucas Baja. I'd be very surprised. That's a good ball over the top. Bryn Mulvaney's in. It probably should have been three, you know. We're playing quite well, um, but we are letting them into it a little bit. Another free kick here. Braderick whips it in. Kelleher claims a very good from the goalkeeper who's been underrated this year. He has been underrated. I think he's been a very good goalkeeper at a time where we needed someone solid. He's not been super impressive, but he's been solid. 
and uh, he'll he'll get a chance next year unless a really good goalkeeper comes up. I can't see myself signing one. We'll see. We'll see what the summer brings. But Keanu Hueva brings it forward here into Casey wide for Divine. Divine onto his right foot. It's not a bad effort from a left wing back on his weaker foot there. A few more performances like that next year, and that sixth place is not far off. It is not far off. We're not going to make a change. Time has flew through. A 2-0 win. Good stuff. Look at those stats. That is really good. I'm very happy with the result and the way you played. We do have Dylan Levitt on the bench, but I've got to be honest, Joel Casey, you ain't coming out of the squad just yet. You can start. And we are into 10th, so, I mean, we could reach 9th. That is possible in this next game. Who have Huddersfield got out of interest? Obviously, we've got Palace. It's a bit more of a difficult game. Palace are in the playoffs, so they've got nothing to play for, interestingly. So maybe we can take advantage of that. I mean, we don't have anything to play for either, to be fair. Huddersfield have Luton, so they'll win that. So, yeah, what a good performance, though, by Joel Casey. Superb, mate. Thank you very much. I think he's got a lot to like about him. He really does. Ignore these. Ignore these. I just think he's got a lot to like. He has been training this position, and he's better in it than he was. But as an advanced playmaker on attack, which is what we played him in last time, he's got all the ability. These could be a bit better. His mental stats, I think, could be a bit better. But I think he's very good. And at 20 years of age now, we've got to start giving him a chance. OK, we move on to Palace then at Selhurst Park. And why change us think? Exactly the same team. A 2-0 win was comfy. Let's see what they do against a bit of a better side, I guess is the better way to say it. It's going to be interesting. I mean, they have this guy up front, Millar. Millar. It's proper Millar, isn't it? Millar. I don't know. Um, he scored five in 37, so he'll probably make it six in 38 today. Uh, Ramen, Ramen Noodle, Benito Ramen Noodle at right back, right back, right wing. He's done okay actually this year since coming in in January. And Cherky, uh, well, he's on loan from Manchester City and he is, well, he's good, isn't he? It's the battle of the Longstaffs. Incredible. Sean Longstaff plays for Crystal Palace. He's wanted by a few teams and he's up against his brother, Matty. Come on, Matty. Come on, Matty. It's going to be interesting this summer because I feel like for the majority of the transfer windows I've had, I've had pretty good transfer windows. I haven't really had a stinker yet. Is this summer going to be that? Possibly. I mean, it'll be interesting. I have brought players. Um, that's, well, that's not good, is it? And it's him. Of course, it's him. Ryan Cherky. It's the only second goal of the season. Someone that good should, should be scoring more goals than that. I'm not having that. I have tended to buy players and the players that have done well for me, I've stuck with them. I've brought them back. Bryn Mulvaney's a good example. Jan Zambaret was a loney that came in permanently. Dylan Levitt, the same. Um, and the, some of these, Kremi Adas, again, is coming in permanently. Cherky's in again. Keller has made the save. I mean, Palace are, are ruining us right now. I haven't had a really bad transfer window, I feel like. But I mean, maybe you can point someone out and, and let me know, but... Is this the summer we do? Highlight for us maybe here though. Divine with the throw into Zambarek. And Jan Zambarek has found Bryn Mulvaney. And Bryn Mulvaney, oh, he's, he's had two bites at the cherry. But that cherry has stayed completely intact. Like it's it's a cherry of steel. Clear they've got a little bit more quality about them. But we're in the game. We are competitive as you can see by the stats. We are on the positive version. We could have gone more defensive. That is ridiculous. That's a free kick. Uh, do you mind? I am talking us up here and you just score against us. We're 2 0 down after 27 minutes. The free kick is from some range. I'll tell you that much. Gallagher should probably do better, but let's let's give the credit to the goal scorer there. That is some range to score a free kick from. Oh, and now Matty Longstaff's been kicked by his brother. This is good, isn't it? Another free kick. Gallagher's made a save this time. That's good. I do wonder if, if going a bit more positive was a mistake here. Um, we haven't really, really been in the races. There's that Mulvaney chance, but they are they are a good team. They are building momentum ahead of the playoffs, and I'm a bit worried we're going to leak a few goals today. Raman is coming forward. It's, it's Bogle. Bogle's cross, and Miller has headed over. Let's get to half-time and try and reevaluate. Maybe a double change might be on the cards, if I'm honest. Longstaff's knock is a potential foot injury, but if he can play through it, I'm fine with that because it's the last game of the season. I'm not really worried 2-0 then at half-time. Not to us, though. We're going to get Casey off, get Dylan Lever the final 45 minutes of the season. Um, and apart from that, is there any other sort of changes that make sense? Not really. Let's let's see what happens in the second half. We're not expected to win this. I'm going to say the performance was poor, though. Let's rip into them a little bit because we are, you know, 2-0 down. 
But when they've got someone like Cherky, who is, I just want to look at him again. He is very good, very good. When does his contract run out? A long, a long way away. We aren't getting him. We are not getting him. Palace are playing sixty-six thousand pounds of his wages as well. Wow. But I feel like looking at the stats, if they don't have him, this is a lot, lot closer on the score sheet too. So I feel like we're doing all right. Reece Devine is very unfit right now. We will get Joel Lopez on. If you've got the option there, let's get him on. Nobody else is worth really bringing on at the minute. Matty Longstaff's on a 6.5. I did see that. Maybe we will bring him off. But we have a highlight here. Longstaff to Zambarek. And if we can work it over here, maybe, Cardo. So that's a good ball. Devine wide for Mulvaney. He's in behind. And Bryn Mulvaney couldn't find the goal. It's a number 20 in goal for, for Palace, Jack Butland. Number 20. We will make that change. Matty Longstaff on. Um, Paris Magoma comes on into that position. Paris Magoma is someone that actually this summer may find himself at a different club. I don't know. But if if we can get some decent money for him, I may make a change there. Because that he's never really found himself in a first choice position. And if we can make a profit and get some money in the door... Maybe this summer's the time that Paris Magoma leaves. This could be his last appearance. It's not a great appearance, is it? It's not fantastic there. Times flew away in the second half, and it is a 2-0 loss. But Palace are a good team. I'm not upset about that too much. Palace are a good team. They're better than us at the moment. I'm going to say you gave it your best. Don't worry, boys. A good season nonetheless. And, yeah, I haven't thought about that, but there are players that could find themselves on the way out here Matty Longstaff's injury is not really a worry but if we do look at sort of players that haven't played for us this year too much Politic I've got to be honest even though we are going to play wide players he could find himself on the way out if we can get some money for him he's, he's worth a fair bit right now if we can get some money for him he's probably going to leave Sam Perry I oh, just you're not you're not here are you mate you're you, you're going to be gone for sure Marvin Jones is an interesting one. Um, he's potentially very good. I'm going to try and loan him out again for another year and see where he goes. Try and build up his value a little bit and then try and make some money. I mean, we're going to make any money anyway. We only signed him for £11,000. And I think he's done all right in those years, um, but never really scored goals. So let's see. Anybody else worth looking at? Lucas Baja is an interesting one. So his contract does run out. And it looks like United are happy to let him go. If I can sign Lucas Baja on a shorter contract, he's only on five grand. He would be the perfect fourth centre-back. So we've got options there. I think that's something we could do. I think he's still very good. Very good. Someone who could come in and be no problem to bring in in the centre-back role. So that could happen. Shamal Frederick will be gone. Liam Delap again, unless his contract runs out, which it doesn't, he'll be gone. I've got to be honest, he's not been fantastic. I think there's better options out there. Tyler Anyango's come in and did okay. And the fact that he only came in in January means he will stay. He came in last year. He's had a whole season. He's not been great. Could we make our money back, though? Not yet. So let's try and play him a bit more. Paris Magoma's the one, though, isn't it? He's valued at £4.1 million. And he's not even fantastic he's a good player for most sky bet league one sides if i can get four million pounds for him i will get four million pounds for him and the board will be fine with that because we signed him on a free we've had some good years from him thank you for your service but four million pounds that's the stuff that we need to be taking advantage of noel mason a similar way in a way he's now 28 though um we signed him for 130,000 pounds if we can get make some money on that that'll be good again he's had a couple of good years but i think his time at the club might be over. Eddie Brown. Eddie Brown is an interesting one. If we can sign some strikers, I will be happy to let him go for a million pounds. We signed him for 96k. That is money making ability. That's what we've got to be looking at. This is going to be a very interesting summer transfer window. But you'll have to find out next episode what happens. Next episode will be the start of the season, so don't miss out on it. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you miss out on no content miss out on no content because that would be heartbreaking for everyone make sure you subscribe to the channel like the video if you liked the video let me know what you think in the comments where where should we be strengthening because as i say i'm gonna put, put you back in this so let's have a look and we will be playing this formation ideally this is what we're going to be playing mulvani up front possibly a different left back but casey will let's put casey there for now um dylan levitt 
in there. But again, it could be another midfielder. The right wing back is a position we need to sign. That is a position right now where we don't have an option. Let's let's clear that position now. That is, we don't have an option there right now. So that's something we need to look at. The rest, though, we've got options for. If we can improve here, perhaps Dylan Levitt. I think he's brilliant still, but I mean he's had a good year, so maybe maybe another option in there against him, um, and perhaps an improvement on the left wing. Perhaps an improvement there as well. I mean, there are options. Let's see what happens. So that is the end of the episode, though. So I was getting to that. That is the end of the episode. Until next time, peace.